I'm Heather, 30 years old. I'm a salesman for a trading company. I have a 32-year-old husband, Ben, and two children, a small son and a daughter. My husband is a regular office worker who never does overtime. He picks up the kids from daycare after work and does the housework at night. However, my relationship with my husband has not been going well lately. I am often away from home on business trips because of my job. When my husband doesn't like it, and when I come home, he keeps complaining and we end up fighting. This has caused an awkward atmosphere in our marriage. I'm home! One night, I came home from a business trip. What took you so long? You've been busy, haven't you? I'm exhausted from taking care of the kids. My husband said to me suddenly, Don't complain like that. It's not like I'm going because I want to. Why don't you come home early sometime and play with the kids? They're always saying, Mommy, Mommy, and looking for you. Even if you say that, I have to work. Before we got married, you told me you'd help me out with the kids while I'm at work. And for that, I give you weekends off and let you do your own thing. So don't make it sound like I'm neglecting our children. I'm not saying you're neglecting our kids. I'm just saying you need to focus a little more on your family. I know it's a lot of work, but you've taken on the responsibility of taking care of the kids, so do your best. Every time I came home late like this, there would be arguments over the kids. I found myself in a state where I could hardly find time where I could rest. I felt like the stress was building up because I was getting a lot of complaints at work, and my husband was giving me a lot of criticism at home, too. Then one day, I happened to be at home when I heard my husband's phone on the table beeping. I looked at it and saw a message that appeared to be from a woman. What is this? It wasn't a work call, was it? I just couldn't make out what it was. At the time, I didn't take it too seriously, thinking it was probably a call from a friend. Little did I know that this would later turn out to be a major incident, and I regret to this day that I should have questioned my husband at the time, so that my children would not have had to go through such a painful experience. In the midst of all this, I decided to go on a business trip away from home again. This time, it will be a long trip, four days and three nights. A meeting for a large project I was to take on was to be held at the headquarters of the client's company. It's a great opportunity for me to advance my career. Of course, I had told my husband in advance, but our relationship had cooled down and we were not talking much, so we had decided to ignore each other more often. Before I go on my business trip, I talk to my kids. I'm off to work hard, I tell them. Mommy, please play with us when you get home. I love Mommy because she always plays with us when she gets home from work. The kids can't seem to wait for me to come home. My children are my first priority, but to be honest, my husband's income is small and we can't make a living without my hard work. It is this spirit of working for the children that makes me work so hard. When I return home, the first thing I'll do is play with my children. With this in mind, I headed for my business trip. The meeting at my business trip went smoothly. As a result of my passionate presentation, the client was satisfied with my proposal and gave me the go-ahead. When I reported the results to my boss, he praised me for a job well done. Now I could go home and see my children without any worries. Or so I thought. I was about to go home in the evening, exhausted, when I received a call on my cell phone. Hello? I'm from the daycare center and your children has been absent for the past four days. Huh? I tried to contact your husband every day, but he just hung up the phone and said they were fine. I was a little worried, so I called you too. That's strange. My husband used to call me if the children had a fever or anything unusual. I tried to call him right away, but I couldn't reach him. I had a bad feeling. I hurried home. When I arrived home, I immediately noticed something strange. All the furniture had been moved out and the place was empty. Huh? What's happening? I entered the house, looked around the room, and was astonished. My children were sleeping together in an empty bedroom. No way. I immediately woke them up. Welcome home, Mommy. I'm hungry. They hugged me tightly. Where did that man go? I immediately took out my cell phone and called my husband. But no matter how many times I tried, I couldn't get through. I kept on calling and calling, and finally he answered. What? 
I heard my husband's sluggish voice. Don't what me? What the hell did you do? I don't understand how the house is empty and our kids were left behind. Where are you right now? Oh, I'm with my girlfriend in our new house. My husband says in a flat tone, like he's talking about the weather, like, yeah, it's raining today. I could feel my brain refusing to comprehend what he was saying. Girlfriend? A new house? He left the kids and went to be with another woman? Does that mean you cheated on me? I raised my voice and he sighed. Sure, you can say that. I'm not going back there. I can't take care of the kids anymore. I took the furniture out, but I left the kids there. What? My mouth was wide open, but no words came out. The cheating, the abandonment. This isn't just about what he did to me. This was unthinkable treatment to our children. They were left alone hungry and crying. Anyway, hurry up and come home. I'm trying to sleep. You're back from your business trip now, so you can take care of the kids. I felt like a blood vessel in my head had snapped. You've got to be kidding me! How can you say such a cold thing after leaving small children unattended? You can say what you want. I don't have to take care of those kids anymore. Bye. With that, my husband hung up the phone. Later, my daughter got a fever, so I took her to the hospital. I'm glad you came home early. I see. I was relieved when the doctor examined her. But why did your husband leave the children alone? The doctor asked me naively, but there was no way I could tell her that he left me and the kids and ran off to be with the woman he was cheating on me with. I just slurred my words and left the hospital. I was so angry that I wondered if there was any way I could blame my husband for his irrational behavior. I couldn't imagine living with my husband anymore, so I decided to consult a lawyer for future considerations. After listening to my story carefully, the lawyer said, That's terrible. Leaving a young child unattended is a crime. He raised his eyebrows. So you don't know where your husband is? Yes, he seems to have turned off his phone. Okay, well, in the meantime, we need to find your husband's whereabouts. I'll ask a friend of mine at the detective agency to help you. The lawyer, known for his reassuring personality, was really accommodating. I took some time off from work and worried about taking care of the children while the detective agency was looking into my husband. My husband had never been proactive in taking care of the children, but I never thought he would treat them so badly. No matter what the excuse, this is not the way anyone should treat their own kids. And he was cheating on me. Where did he get a girlfriend? Did he always flirt with other women when I was away on business, leaving the kids at home? I had goosebumps all over my body, and seething anger took over. I could never forgive him. He must get what he deserves. That's how I thought. My husband could not run and hide since he was the perpetrator, so he soon found out where he had gone. The husband lived in an apartment in the next town over with the woman he was having an affair with, and she commuted to work from there. The woman worked at a bar, has been remarried twice, and has no children. My husband, freed from the care of the children, went out to gamble on Saturdays and Sundays and started to frequent the bar, and as predicted, he left the children at home and cheated on me while I was on a business trip. It seems that the debt-ridden woman was feeding on my husband's salary, not only for drinking money, but also for living expenses. I knew my husband wasn't the brightest, but I didn't think he'd have gone that far. On the evening of the day I found out where he was living, I visited the apartment with my lawyer. We knocked on the door and my husband answered it. The woman was away, apparently on a night job. Oh, it's you. My husband stared at me, looking bored. What you did was a crime. Can you even understand that? I immediately cut to the chase. My lawyer explained the importance of legal responsibility as a parent who should also protect the child. He then proceeded to explain to him how we should move forward in our marriage, but he wasn't listening. I know, I know. But I couldn't stand the thought of having two kids to take care of. I just wanted my freedom. My husband's words were truly pathetic and unacceptable. Besides, there are many men in this world who are raising several children on their own. I take care of them all weekends, and what's so hard about taking care of your own kids for a few hours after work during the week? Even if it's hard, is that the reason to cheat on your wife and move out of the house? 
What you're saying is just excuses, just weak talk. Did you plan to become a criminal and run away if something happened to your kids? Did you think that life would go on like that? How could I think that? If you, a woman, had stayed home to take care of the kids in the first place, there wouldn't have been any problems. Why is he talking with such old-fashioned thinking? I'm mortified. My husband thought this wasn't his fault and was not willing to budge from his position. I gave up, thinking, oh, this is a complete disaster. I don't regret having children, but marrying you was the biggest mistake of my life. A man who disrespects the life of a child is the worst kind of human being. Call me what you want. I'm free to live my life. I wonder if he has no sense of guilt or remorse. My husband's behavior was so out of control that I was disgusted. My parents-in-law, shocked by the disappearance of their son, who had neglected their child and ran off with a woman, rushed to my place, got down on their knees, and apologized. It was not their fault, and I accepted their apology softly. It was my parents who were furious from the bottom of their hearts. Of course they were. What grandparents wouldn't be angry when their adorable children are left unattended for long periods of time? But I offered to take the heat for the whole thing and asked my parents to stand back. After talking it over with my lawyer, I decided to file a civil suit against my husband and the woman he was cheating on me with, with a view of criminal charges for neglecting my children. My husband refused to acknowledge the fact that he had committed a crime. At the trial, he admitted that he had left the children, but he evaded saying that he did not intend to put the children in danger. I stared blankly at the court proceedings. How could I have let this happen? I slowly thought back to the time when I met my husband. When we first got married, he was kind. He was a good man who respected my opinion, even if he was a bit of a pain in the ass. But after we got married and had a baby, his attitude changed. He did not like children and I could not see the underlying problem. The trial didn't take long and I won the case. Then the police got involved. My husband was questioned on charges such as protective custody and because it was his first defense, the charges were dropped. However, this was a de facto conviction. I took this opportunity to ask my husband for a divorce and we became strangers. I would never see him again. After that, my parents, who were worried about their grandchildren, came to visit us frequently. The children seemed to enjoy seeing their grandparents very much. It must have been so hard for you. I'm so glad they are safe. My mother looks back fondly. My father was still furious with my ex-husband. I also filed a claim against the woman with whom my husband had an affair. I wonder what she's going to do. She closed her bar and fled the apartment at night, and I don't know where she went after that. My ex-husband was fired from his job because of his crime and is now living alone in a cheap apartment. Either way, it's none of my business. This was the most shocking event in my life. I never thought that my husband would abandon our children and run off with a woman whom he was having an affair. I realize that no one can predict what will happen in this world. But then, something wonderful happened to me. As you may have guessed, I was set to get married to a new man. It was with a senior colleague from the same company I work at. He had been watching over me with great concern over what had happened. I was shocked and emotionally distressed, but I was able to maintain my peace of mind by talking to him about it, and gradually I was drawn to him. I asked him out and he accepted, even knowing that I have two children. He loves children, unlike my ex-husband. I think they liked his kind and cheerful personality, and our children took him in immediately, and we got married soon after. A few years later, when they were a little older, I asked them about their father. They both had a vague recollection of their father, but they told me that he had left them to watch TV when they were hungry. You can never underestimate a child, especially one who remembers the most shocking things, including how they felt at the time. Maybe it was traumatic for them. We have to bear the responsibility of raising our children. As I looked at the two children playing with their new father in the park, I thought about the life that lay ahead of me. <laughs>